Uh, Ms. Varney, as, as you may know, I'm, I'm very interested and, and concerned about the potential merger of Comcast and NBC Universal. And I know that you can't uh, discuss the specifics of the Comcast NBC Universal merger, but I want to talk to you a bit about my concerns and ask you questions about the way that the Department of Justice analyzes antitrust actions, certainly in this um, field. I've said this before, but I can't say it enough. It matters who runs our media companies. The media are our source of information. They're the way we look, learn about the world and how we understand the world. So it's a problem when the same company, to me it is, it's a problem when the same company produces the programs and runs the pipes that brings us those programs. Now, I was working at, at NBC when FinCEN, the financial interest and syndication rules, were rescinded. FinCEN had existed to prevent a conflict of interest. Networks weren't allowed to own more than a very small number of their own shows. Uh, NBC promised at the time of the hearings about FinCEN uh, that rescinding FinCEN wouldn't change the way NBC treated other companies' programming. They said, we're not going to pick, we're not going to choose our own programming over someone else's programming. Why would we do that? Our interest is in ratings. My first question to you is, do you know what happened after FinCEN was rescinded on the networks? They uh, re relatively promptly favored their own programming. Relatively promptly, like immediately. That's exactly right. And I say this, this is background, so you understand my inherent distrust of NBC's and Comcast promises. It's just too easy for a media company that owns its own programming to favor that programming. That's, that's a big problem for consumers who get less information than from fewer sources. My experience is, has been that media consolidation creates more media consolida consolidation. When FinCEN was abolished, it meant that these networks could own their own shows, and they started to. By 1992, over 50 percent of the shows on NBC were owned by NBC. Well, what that did was that the started the studios just started buying networks because now they had a place to put their shows. So Disney bought ABC, uh, Viacom, which owns Paramount, bought, bought CBS, NBC and Universal merged, Fox owns Fox, and I'm worried that if the NBC Comcast merger goes through, AT and T and Verizon are going to buy their own networks in Hollywood studios. And if that ha happens, we're going to have a serious impact on independent programming. Mm -hmm. Now, independent programming is already declining. According to an analysis done by the Independent Film and Television Association, the percentage of independently produced fiction series on the national networks plunged from approximately 50% in 1989, these are independents, not Disney, not, and not owned by the networks. 50% in 1989, before FinCEN was rescinded, to just 5% in 2008. Independent programming is, actual, is, is critical. It's the way we get access to new information and new perspectives. Ms. Varney, what I want to ask you is what can and will the antitrust division do to ensure that competition is restored in the entertainment industry and that the barriers to distributing independent programming are diminished? Well, let me assure you, Senator, we don't rely on promises. If a transaction is anti-competitive and violates Clayton Seven's uh, prohibition on substantially lessening of competition, we will block it. We will go to court and we will block it. As I understand your concerns, and I've, I've tried to follow, you've spoken publicly about this, and, and I, would, I understand your concerns in antitrust parlance to fall into two broad categories. 
You're concerned about the vertical integration that Comcast owning the pipes is going to favor its own programming and discriminate against other programming, and you're concerned about the horizontal overlap yes. in both instances. Yes. The way we analyze those type of mergers, and you're absolutely right, this is a vertical integration with horizontal overlap. We will use all of the existing tools that we have to understand what the competitive marketplace will look like post-transaction. And should we have the evidence that guides us to the conclusion that this is a transaction that will meet the standards set by the courts and set by the law, we will challenge it. However, if the parties come back to us and adequately address our concerns that would be actionable, we would explore with them how those concerns could be addressed. They will not be addressed in promises. Should we get there, and I have not prejudged it, and I would never speak on a specific investigation, but in any investigation, when we reach a consent with parties, those consents are binding orders of the court that we will enforce and we will bring actions for violations of those orders. The fine for violations can be as high as $10,000 per occurrence. Occurrence is defined very narrowly so that you can have a massive number of occurrences of any particular transaction. So in general, that's how we look at these mergers when they are both vertical and horizontal. Okay, here, here's another concern. Thank you for your answer. My other, one of my other concerns about Comcast NBC is, is uh, and this is impact the, uh, people in Minnesota and all over the country, is their cable bills. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems to me that combined NBC and Comcast, and Comcast is the biggest cable carrier, that's right. and one of the biggest uh, internet providers too. So and that's the future. Uh, and NBC owns not just NBC's programming, but all these other cable uh, networks, Bravo, uh, MSNBC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they could. NBC can start charging Comcast twice as much for its programming and for Bravo and for MSNBC. Mm -hmm. And then that means every other cable station has to pay the same fee. Mm -hmm. But with Comcast, it's going from one pocket to the other with Comcast NBC. But for the other cable owners, it creates a tremendous unfair advantage for the Comcast NBC and increases the cable costs, the, the cable bills of every American. Now, so my question is, in a merger transaction involving cable companies, how do you analyze whether consumers' cable bills are actually likely to go up? And where does that figure into this? So again, without commenting on a specific transaction, uh, which absolutely. You can't do. Um, what you do, Senator, is you take all the documentary evidence, which will include both past pricing, uh, future uh, in plans of pricing. You do econometric analysis. I mean, you run a number of both economic t economic tests and look at direct evidence, and you attempt to determine whether or not there'll be a significant non-transitory price increase that would be actionable under the antitrust laws. If you find that evidence, that is certainly something you would consider when you try when you try to determine whether or not you block the merger. Thank you. Thank you very much.